But, you know, I want to talk about uh, something that I seen years ago that even to this day, I come back and, and fucking laugh at. Like, I try to visit it once a year because it's hilarious. It's the day that you snuck in to a Survivor Series in full Sherlock Holmes, you know, uh, outfit, you know, completely hidden in disguise and jumped was up I, and busted was the I trouble. In, in full, was I in full? All I had off was of Beatles wig. Was it okay? <laughs> I don't remember exactly. It wasn't much, it wasn't much to it. Yeah, I got um, you through, and I got you there. What was that? I mean, what was that like? It was hilarious, and I fucking love it to this day. It's it's non scripted, unscripted stuff that just randomly happens, and it was fucking amazing. Well, I mean, the way I look at it was uh, the payoff was was Madison Square Garden. Uh, completely worth it, right? Oh, like, yeah. Every chance that I took that day was for the booking in Madison Square Garden with Ring of Honor, um, and I and I and and a reunion with Big Cass on the on the, the tails of that. When you see me and Big Cass jump a guardrail at Ring of Honor, I lent it a lot of credibility by showing up to the WWE event. And the reason why the Ring of Honor event was not shot by the cameramen on premise that day was because. I told Joey Mercury, the producer, who was one of my first coaches in the WWE when I got hired. He was in the staff of coaches. It was just, uh, you know, life coming together, like I said, like a simulation, man. Like the first booking me and Cass get outside of WWE is Madison Square Garden. And the first show ran by a non-McMahon in 60 years. Like, you can't make this shit up. So um, the reason why I did the Survivor Series was for the Garden booking. Um, and man, if you Googled my name at that time, you would see a lot of things about, uh, my, my departure from the company. Okay. Yeah. And I know what shock value can do and I'm a worker. And at this point I don't work for anyone and there's no one paying my bills and you're not putting food on my plate and I don't owe you anything. So if I'm in the business of the real one brand that I'm launching this new brand of mine, real one, and I show up at that event and all I had to pay was $2,500 for that front row ticket. And I trend number one in the fucking world, not Brock Lesnar, who was the champion, not the pay-per-view itself survivor series. I trend number one in the world that night. I mean, if I told you that you can for $2,500 trend number one in the world and when I type your name in now, I don't see all that bullshit about you getting fired as much as I see about this shit that happened, right? Brilliant. It, Brilliant. It, it was headlines. It removed bad headlines out of my out of mine. And then it also parlayed me an opportunity back into pro wrestling. It was just unfortunate that timing wise, you know, being a big cast, we couldn't end up working. Uh, he ended up, you know, having to take care of himself. And which he did, and he got in the best shape of his life, and you see where he's at now. So everything happens for a reason. Um, if we would have wrestled together that time with the with the heat that we had and this, that, and where he was mentally, where I was at mentally, we would have ended up, you know, further damaging our reputations in the business, which were was unwarranted to begin with. Cause if you really look at it, like we were in the WWE, I was for seven years and was supposed to be on TV the night I got fired. It wasn't like I got fired that night because I wasn't doing my job. Right. No, All right. Sure, thank dude. you, David. Hey, you guys have a great night. Um, you I hope, as well. Uh, Feel better, man. Feel better. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Take care. Josh. Right. 